I might just sit here with a subby suit on. Say, this is my career here. <laughs> and then put some bandages on me. If this was a bench, this was our career. Mm. Um, we were both uh, playing professional football at the time and uh, I just left the club called St Mirren and uh, Stephen had just joined it and through a mutual friend of ours, Andy Dorman, uh, we just became really good pals. Um, Stephen lived with Andy at the time and his uh, missus moved over from America so Andy had to move into another flat. Stephen didn't have anywhere to stay so he just it's moved there myself. It was the first time I'd actually moved out of Dundee I yeah. think. I'd, I'd played for uh, Dundee, Dundee United, and uh, I'd moved to Glasgow, I was thinking it was only like 25. Um, I just became in a circle of friends, Mark being one of those guys, we'd kind of have a coffee club and we'd like to come up with ideas, like after training, kind of, what do you want to do after football? Even at that early stage, we were still thinking, like, what are we going to do when we finish playing? Yeah, we obviously try to come up with an idea, because all well, through your career, when you're coming towards the end of it, you're still thinking like, what what can I do next? And um, it's quite a daunting sort of sort yeah, we of. Weren't, we weren't fortunate enough to be in a position like a English Premiership player where you can retire at the end of your career and maybe do some, have a nice luxury lifestyle. We were kind of thinking, right, what actually are we going to do? We're going to have to get a nine to five office job, or what we what we actually going to? Yeah. What's it going to lead on to? So. Obviously, it didn't really happen overnight like no, that, to be fair, no, did it? Didn't, it? Um, it didn't at all. We, we kind of went our separate ways for a while, didn't we? We yeah. obviously lived together, and then um, I moved up to Ross County, was playing football at Ross County for a few years. Um, and then, like, I got a bad injury. So I'd had a bad injury in my career, and it sort of come back. And um, I, I got injured in one game, and uh, I remember trying to come back from it, and I, I couldn't come back, and I was trying to get training. I was taking a lot of painkillers every day try to get it back into the fold and I remember playing one game at, at Celtic Park and came off the bench maybe just after half time and just miles off the game I think we ended up getting beat 4-0 but um, I, just, I was just like that day I remember thinking I, I can't play at this level anymore so I really need to start thinking about what I'm going to do so we, we kind of just kept an, I, I was fortunate <coughs> enough to get a, a chance to go and play in Thailand at the time it was just kind of like a, a total different opportunity for me and that was why I, why I wanted to go and do that but in football, you, you you make friends, but like you, you don't actually keep in touch with too many guys. I think that's kind of a lot of guys are like that. Yeah. You've got like kind of almost a lot of acquaintances. But when I moved oh, to Thailand, and me and Mark kept in touch, and we were still at the point where like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And that was kind of where kind of thinking all the time. There must be some there must sort be of opportunity. Can, there must be an can, opportunity like that can maybe make us some money out, out, outside the game. And obviously, like I said. Um, I'd, I was got quite a bad injury and I was I was probably looking at more than Robbo at the time because I was sort of panicking like what what can we do what can we do and Rob was like well I'm living the dream out here so, <laughs> yeah uh, I'm not going <laughs> to send you there but like I think you'd made some friends over there with yeah. some sort of manufacturers and you'd obviously they were making sort of things for stalls and like yeah, there, there was, was a few people making t-shirts there was a few wholesalers that I got in there. touch with a few uh, foreign guys uh, Italian guy French guy uh, a couple of English lads. Um, and we all just kind of were in that friend circle. Actually, a few of them became, were actually supporters of the team I was actually playing for. So it made that kind of initial chat a lot easier, saying I play for the uh, one of the teams in the city. Um, and then that kind of just led on me going back to Coco and saying, I think we can we can maybe start a brand. What do you think? And I remember it. I remember when you first came to me, you were like, oh, do you think we should start a brand? And I was like, I don't know. And it's just that, that fear of sort of not really knowing what to do. It's like, you should we start this? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know. And a few people I'd known had started them and I didn't want to be like, like stepping on any, like I didn't want to like offend anyone, but <coughs> I don't know, I don't know. And then he was like, ah, come on, we'll just try it. So um, he obviously just convinced me to do it, which thankfully was one of the best things he'd done. And again, uh, it comes back, it was like, because it was such a small investment, we only like invested like five, five or 600 pounds between us. And like starting on, because I've made friends with these factories, it's like super, low minimum orders to, there was very little risk involved for us but at the end of the day that was all the money we probably had at that time like we didn't have excess cash to go and right I'm going to invest thousands of pounds in a business it wasn't like I was still just like very much let's put it in our hobby and try and like I think we were just, sort of, it, uh, just, just we're doing it for the fun of it a well yeah, as well yeah. a bit to start with so we just come up with these like four designs um I think we'd 
it got really low minimums, didn't we? Yeah, it was like twenty five pieces per per style. Yeah, it was have, a basic white any, tee, but it was just like a graphic print. Yeah, we didn't have any. We didn't have any like expertise in like design or or really selling it from making mm. a website or anything. So really, to start with, it was really organic. So. We just came up with these designs, I think four designs. I think we designed them on our iPhone, yeah. like the football related one with the tactics. Yeah, yeah, we tried to tie board. it to football. Um, there was the, a lot of skull roses, the candy yeah, skulls. Aye, aye. Skulls um, were obviously quite popular. Using, using some like just basic Shutterstock files. Like, we had no skills like for like design or anything like that. And I think that's where we've learned over the years. We had to kind of self teach ourselves, like self, we're self taught in a lot of the stuff that we do in the business, even to this day. We're, yeah regarding figures and uh, no. help like working with the marketing team and all that so so we'd managed to get these four designs obviously Rob would being around his manufacturer sort of managed to get a really low minimums and once they got designed they got sent over and I was like right what are we going to do with these so we, we think we just started on Facebook to start with yeah. didn't we so yeah. we just uh we had these four designs we put them on a we set up a Facebook page put these four designs on our Facebook and we managed to get like a few footballers that we played with and against that were probably a lot better, a lot than, better us, than us. Uh, a lot better. Just kind um, of on a national and like the like and a few premiership, premiership players, players well. and Scottish premiership players that like Mark says were better than us but we're quite happy. It was kind of before that whole influencer yeah, market. It was a sort of, sort of start of Instagram. It was the yeah, start, start of Instagram yeah, was the and start. there was boys like, I don't know, obviously from Scotland, Stephen Naismith, Charles McGrew, Scott Brown, Robert Snodgrass, yeah. they'd, they'd all put it on their social medias and pushed it in. And within the first sort of week or two, we'd sold out, sold out the, 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 the product. Batch, yeah. yeah, so we were buzzing off that. Um, and then obviously once we did that, we just took the money, we just reinvested in, and uh, invested it in more product. Yeah. And uh, just I kept think doing we maybe that. restocked those same t-shirts and maybe added in another two, bit, possibly. Yeah. I think it was that yeah. was when we were like, all right, okay, when no one, I think our first uh, website was like a big cartel website yeah, that awful, was, it was it? terrible we yeah. ourselves we done it ourselves yeah no. but it was the things you had to do with no budget but we just had to do something that could get make it easier for the customer to actually purchase the product i think we were uh, at the time we were looking for sort of ideas name. and a bit of inspiration weren't we for, yeah. for the name of the brand um we we're obviously scouring lots of like yeah. social media and, and, and coming up with real ideas of how we were going to set the brand up so initially because we didn't have any like sort of design background or, or any way of we had the initial four designs but we we're thinking how, how are we going to get more designs and because we didn't have a great design background we we're thinking how, how can we get people to design for us or, or get a designer in and uh, we kind of came up with an idea of like well if we can get somebody to design for us run like a competition uh, we can use that person's designs and maybe give them like 10, 15 of their t-shirts as well. So we'll maybe order like 50 and we'll give them like 10 or 15 or so they can make the money give on, them they some can, of it. They can get a slice of Yeah, of and they can maybe, se maybe sell it to their friends mm -hmm. or, 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 or family or anything really. And we thought that's maybe a good way of getting people to design for us, uh, maybe come up with constant designs. Um, after our first four designs sold out so well, we didn't actually go yeah, down that, 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 that idea route. idea just got but, shelved, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, but just got, uh, it kind of came with the idea of, well, we're, we're kind of trying to inspire somebody to design for us. So we were looking at that aspect and then I think Stephen had been sort of scouring through like social yeah, media. Like and he, the and he early days at like Instagram, there was, there was a few pictures I'd, I'd seen and it, it just turned out it was a sweetie rapper with uh, be, in, be Inspired written on it. And it was a case of like, can we can we just take away the B and come up with a logo? Yeah, can we use can we use that? We always to, found that like a lot of brands that we've seen all had like just a, a logo instead of just text. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like we needed it. We wanted a logo to start with, which is yeah. it, which has changed over the years, over the last yeah. few years anyway. But the so original kind of tied in like B inspired with like the little B logo, and then like obviously we were using the the platform to inspire people to design for us. So that's kind of where the, the name Be Inspired yeah, came from. Initial, we just sort of initial. ran with that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, because we had like a lack of designer skills. Yeah, we just didn't really have any design. We nah. obviously self-taught. Obviously we try to, try to learn. I think yeah. we learned Photoshop in like six months between the two of us. And, and the first ones were on our phones. Yeah. So we were thinking that you can't really sustain a brand if you're designing like, or it's taken that long to design things on your phone. So we were just... We just wanted to give something back as well as what we try and do nowadays is give back to the customer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, if kind of make people, people who feel are, part of the brand, yeah. wouldn't they? If you design for us, then you can get some t-shirts and you can maybe sell them, and it kind of makes people feel part of the brand uh, rather yeah. than to just buy like, into the brand. We're just telling people yeah. what they want. Yeah. yeah.
Well, yeah, obviously uh, we kind of design most of our products uh, based on what we feel the customer wants. We've got a lot of analytical data that we use. Um, and even sort of the, the B33 we came up with due to the fact that a customer, like we, we put that out there and the customers really liked that. So we just carried on using yeah. the B33 through, uh, through time. We try and get as much feedback from the customer as much as possible now. Yeah, of course. Um, just looking at like interacting through the emails and through the social media stories. Um, yeah. Just try, to, just try to see what they what they want as well as we. It's all fine and well what we want, but like we kind of know what the customer wants now just from obviously the sales data that we've acquired over the last last few years. So it's just kind of like the customer that determines the the direction of the brand yeah. a lot of the yeah, time, isn't sure. it? Just depending on what products that mm -hmm. that that's shown up in our. We've added in different branding company. over the years, just like obviously the B thirty threes, a focal point of the of the brand now. Um, it's just I think it's it's actually really recognisable on the street yeah. now, so that when people see it, they know. Whereas previously, we maybe just had the small small B logo that was on yeah. the gut the product, and people were probably noticing the design. It more wasn't than like an initial the B thirty three wasn't even initially it wasn't part it, of the no, brand. No. It was just something that we'd included, and, like and we got a good three customer years, reaction. It's probably like two or three years at down two years maybe down the line. Yeah. Yeah, it was just like we started doing like photo shoots with a couple of the samples that came in with the, the logo on the chest and it, it just kind of worked for us. Mm -hmm. Just like coming, uh, my time was kind of up in Thailand with the football. Um, it was just when I was just wanting to come home and sometimes when you get to a certain age, your mind starts to switch to like this, like this hobby that we had had kind of taken off into like this brand and I was like, it was, my focus was starting to go away from football, from having injury problems and stuff like that. I just like, oh, I really enjoyed doing doing this this type of idea. So to, I moved back in, it was just like kind of like fast forward in the time and I moved back in with Mark in Glasgow and then we were getting the product sent in from, uh, from Thailand originally. Yeah, so uh, I'd got a bad injury and I was uh, thinking about what to do. So. I remember uh, I left Ross County and um, I went part-time at football and then that, that sort of ended and, and for a six month period I, d I didn't really have a, a job or anything, um, I was kind of coming to sort of terms with I wasn't going to be playing football and I was, I was really looking for a job and, and nothing was coming along and uh, I remember thinking like I've only really got two weeks sort of money left before I'm, I'm going to have to move up my flat and and um, it sort of got to that stage that I was thinking I'm maybe going to have to move up my parents, give up my flat and and sort of go for there but luckily I'd, I'd managed to get a job and, and we'd sort of started being inspired at the time and um it, it sort of for me for me yeah like for me just, yeah, like, for me, just get by, yeah. it was just enough to get by and I, I managed to get a part-time contract with Stran Ra at the time as well yeah. so um like the, the that, was the, that, that was the bonus with starting be inspired when we started it is because we had other income coming in it definitely gave us the chance that mm -hmm. I know we had a small investment in the brand but like <clears throat> We, we had a weekly wage yeah, so that we could actually like, it wasn't it. too much pressure so we could reinvest the money that any sales were coming in, they could, that could then get reinvested in the next yeah, batch so of t-shirts. So, so there was no, like, uh, and that was kind of a rule that we set between us is like, we didn't touch any of the money, the money stays in, that, in, in the, the bank account account and it gets reinvested and that, that probably happened for two years, so really. Yeah, yeah, just reinvested everything, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, we took like once we were at a stage where we could take a small wage to replace our our job that we'd that we'd actually given up yeah. that we could actually then carry Put on more time yeah, into to make the brand better and better. just building the brand wasn't yeah. it? As I was saying, I got a bad injury and I was I was kind of thinking, where am I going to go my career? So I thought, right, I'll, I'll go part time and I'll get a job. So mm. I'd come back down the road and I was working in sort of read recruitment when. Um, the brand first sort of took sort of started and we were getting designs over and um, the, the, the demand was just getting higher and higher and I was getting stuff sent to, sent to work and I was like posting stuff on my, on my lunch hour so I was going to maybe like taking like 15, 20, 30 parcels to work with me and then on my lunch hour I was just spending all lunch in the post office posting them and, and Stephen's like uh, working with recruitment that yeah, point as well. Yeah, I, was working, so, I came back and I went semi-pro with football and then and also got a job in the city. We used to walk into the town. Uh, it was like a 20 minute walk from yeah, Gorbals. 20 minute walk for the Gorbals. Um, used to walk into work, walk home, and it's just be discussing what we're gonna do with the brand. Like, where's, where's, what, 
what do we want to do? Like, where do we what want to go? We're gonna go. Um, and we were doing like, so you'd be working full time, we'd still be paying part time football. So it'd be like Saturdays, Tuesday, Thursday was taken up, and any spare minute we got was the Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, yeah, Sunday night was just like let's constantly, constantly work on, on be inspired and see where see where we can take it. I think it was a we maybe did that for like three months before we yeah. were like right this is kind of taking over our time yeah. we were like I was spending more time thinking about what I was going to do with Be Inspired than I was at Reed Recruitment and I was I was always getting taught you up to I was kind of living in my head a lot of the time just thinking about what we were going to do and I think Stephen first of all said like I can't do this anymore I'm gonna I'm gonna quit and I'm gonna sort of go full time with a brand and I was like well I'll just try and keep my job for a wee while because it's a bit it's a bit precarious giving up your, it's quite giving daunting, up your job isn't it? it's you know quite I mean? like the the sales weren't like unbelievable but <clears> we we never had any marketing platform yeah. all we were just using was like organic social media and again like the footballers trying to push the stuff as much as possible but it was just one of the as soon as we'd done it, uh, it then the business with the full our full time Hours were going into driving the business. It was forward. just getting a little bit out of hand. The way it was growing mm-hmm. and trying to stay in your straight, stay in your job at the same time. So like, it's probably like the best. It was best looking back. It was the best thing we ever uh, done for easily, work. easily. And it just kind of when we gave up, it just sort of accelerated, yeah. didn't it, massively? So the brand, the brand we're working out of, out of Mark's flat. So when I when I came back from from Thailand, the stock room was Mark's bedroom, and then the stock got moved up to the upstairs into my room. There was a bit more space in the far side, so. Yeah. You were sleeping just, on I was sleeping on t shirts, just like they were just piled up in boxes. And then as we started reinvesting the money and looking at, we started bringing in tracksuits, which has been a major part of our business over the last six years. I think that's sort of what kicked us on a little bit. Obviously, we're selling t shirts, and there's quite a few sort of like bedroom brands that had been doing t shirts, but nobody had really taken it sort of to the next stage. And coming from football, we knew what we liked in a tracksuit, we knew what sort of fit well. We, and, and how we'd want to wear it. So we'd kind of gone out of our way to try and find out how, how can we start our tracksuit. And There's so many amendments to that yeah, tracksuit that fit. Don't no, get me don't wrong, like the that. first couple were a disaster. Yeah, we were just like, I think this is, we're at the stage now where the sales were starting to come in consistently. Like just using our, our social media platforms, they're like- Just organic market, yeah, wasn't it? And having, having more and more footballers start to wear the product. Um, we were just like right. We're gonna take the take the plunge and go for like a little office space. I think we so needed to move out. We needed. We needed. Left me. Yeah, aye, good point actually. So <laughs> we'd found a, a thousand square foot unit and we went in and we're like, this is far too big for us. We, aye, we were we panicking at the time. Yeah, we don't need way. this, but we got a bit of support from like the government on that from yeah. um, the initiatives that they, they you get some help with the rent sort of stuff relief, like rent that. Relief, yeah, yeah. which was which was a massive help for us in the beginning um but <laughs> honestly how quickly we did that place fill up it was the christmas we, were we like, moved we're in like, the august we're like this is this and is the christmas big. was are, just are went we gonna, mental are we gonna are we gonna need all this space yeah. and then christmas time went i think it was like the first sort of black friday that yeah. had happened didn't it and i remember just uh, i remember just sitting at that computer yeah. just printing he'd had a hip operation um so i I remember we'd been on a night out and find a night out we had in Edinburgh. Ah, yeah, and then we'd come and we came, back the next day because we didn't, obviously nobody really knew anything about Black Friday. We didn't no. think it was going to go too mad and we come back on the Black Friday and there was just, just a delivery as well. There was 10 boxes and the lift was knackered. Aye, and I just think there was like was a thousand of orders, wasn't there? A thousand just orders that we'd never, just sat at the we'd table never just to print. You were printing and I was packing. I didn't even leave that it. table all day, just no. printing. We did it in a horrible old school way of like copy and pasting every le- yeah. e- every uh, address, copying and pasting it. It was so label. manual. It was just the two of us as well. We had maybe had like one helper as well, one worker mm. at the time. So to actually then just like see the growth of the business in the following two oh, or three years was oh, just right. like that. It yeah. was just like phenomenal. From every kind of Black Friday we've had, you just yeah. see the difference of like the scale of operation that's oh, going on. That first one where. I- copying and printing and labels and then yeah. we were doing the franking machine like i think like like i say it was like a thousands of orders and we we're just like doing experience. it so manually i think it took us like two days just to print and pack the orders oh man it was it was a shift like, at that point uh, we we'd really sort of we got tracksuits and they were r- working really well for us yeah and um, that was when we started leading on the photo shoots we actually yeah. had enough money that we could actually yeah. go and do these do you remember we got that razor tracksuit and so yeah we, we, in abercrombie we'd um We'd, we'd sort of first tracksuits had come in and they'd done really well for us and then we, we launched this tracksuit called the Razor tracksuit. It was like 
blue tracksuit and had a white, white panel on the top. Yeah. And it just had the actual EB logo yeah, on it, didn't yeah. it, at that time. And um, I just, I just- it was couldn't get enough of it. Like, we, 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 we kept reordering it, kept reordering kept reordering it. And that kind of led on to like- That it, sort of took the brand to the next yeah, level, we didn't were it, just, that We were just suit. doing the photo shoots like, so the photo shoot would be in around Glasgow, mm -hmm. West End of Glasgow, around about the warehouse, the off, like mm -hmm. we're just mm -hmm. kind of making what we had. We just had like a local photographer um, taking, yeah. taking the videos and we made a video as well we're just coming up with different ideas of like how can we make the brand we were doing everything local to start yeah. with weren't we yeah and we were like, doing we everything to... local in and around glasgow mm -hmm. and then we were like how do we take this on to how make it we... desirable yeah. we wanted to like almost make it like a travel blog a little bit so that we're going we're traveling to these exotic places and showcasing our products to and how how the customer would wear our product in these locations yeah, so like making aspirational and, isn't it it's yeah like, sure we kind of went to dubai like was one of us we went to barcelona but that was sort of right back in the beginning but I, i'd say our first sort of like proper sort of photo shoot abroad was like dubai we went over to dubai and we, we found all these sort of class locations i remember we shot in zero gravity and we shot like and around the marina and we went up to the desert that was yeah, cool, wasn't it? cool wasn't it and um i just remember thinking at that time that they just made the brand look yeah. better than all of our competitors at that yeah. time they weren't doing anything i think you'll like find that. a lot of people just do this as standard now so yeah, it's kind of like yeah. i feel like we, we were the first ones to kind of set the bar on this mm -hmm. so like putting it out there that oh yeah, that this is what you almost like setting the trend of you need to do this i'm yeah. not saying everybody needs to yeah. do that like we don't do 20 location shoots a year but like we always feel like we, it's quite nice to go and showcase the product in a in another location. Yeah, kind of giving the customer like I'd love to go there. I'd love to wear that brand. Yeah. Do you know I mean, just kind of aspirational for yeah. the customer to be seen. And from Dubai, we've taken it to uh, Miami, Thailand, New York, Chicago, um, Chicago. Yeah. Some ama some amazing right. locations, and the Thailand was one of my Tokyo, sort of Tokyo, was Tokyo. Tokyo was really good. Remember shooting in Thailand at Maya Bay? We got yeah. up at six in the morning. Yeah, um, we had to get the tractor because the tide had gone out. We had yeah. to get the tractor out. Took us in, uh, and the the water was yeah, like where, glass. They, where they filmed the beach. Yeah, the and beach. It's usually mobbed, and there was like not there a person there. there. It was amazing. It was just coming in on the on the boat, and we got out with the baby sharks. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, uh, swimming about, and then just walking on the beach, and there was just nobody there. It was just unbelievable. Right. I remember shooting there for a good like two hours yeah. when the sun was coming up, and just the two models and, and the just. I think the I think the models amazing. enjoyed coming on the shoots as well, because it was just like we always liked to do something that was like we'd get up at like before sunrise just to. Whereas like maybe other people would just go, oh, we'll just get up at yeah. ten o'clock and we'll shoot for a couple of hours, and we have always done things that were just like a bit different. It was kind of a, it was kind of a bit before sort of influence as well. But we were taking these models on photo shoots, and then they were putting on their social media. It was like they were kind of like f sort of vlogging for us about yeah. like look at this location where I would be inspired, Clove, and look at this, and it and it kind of like again made the customer think, wow, look at the models, they're really yeah. enjoying themselves. That, that this is a cool brand, yeah. and the more photo shoots we did, the, the more we just saw the sort of sales and the grant the brand grow and grow and grow. So we uh, we just felt that the sort of more we put into these sort of things, the the more it reflected on the brand and the more yeah. the customer engaged in the product, which kind of led us moving on to things like we started sponsoring pool parties. Yeah. So we did like BH Mallorca. Just to add in more events and yeah. the. Uh, again, like relating to the customer, so that they could get be part of that, be part of the brand. Obviously. I kind of thought, where's the customer going to wear this product, or, and how are they going to how are they going to think that that's going to look good in their sort of environment? So things like the yeah. BH Mallorca. The I remember, party. I remember one of the guys from Futsal coming to us and saying, "Are oh, we doing like a like a sourcing trip in Ibiza?" And just like the sh the brand was everywhere. Yeah, everywhere was kind of on being yeah, inspired. Yeah, everywhere he said, I just, I just can't believe like how how far you have come from this to this, just by going to summer locations for holiday locations and just seeing the brand everywhere. That small that small warehouse that that small office that we had, yeah. we we grew out of it so fast that we're like and doing all these events and having footballers wearing the product that we're like, we need, we now need another bigger unit. We mm -hmm. were literally in there for like a year and a half. And then it was just like, well, we need another unit. And yeah. the one that we definitely weren't, this will last us for years. Like we'll be in here for as long as we know. I remember walking in the warehouse yeah, it was just we like, we took a few just, people to see it and they're like thinking like, this what is, is going to be a bit big. It was almost like they were saying like, what are you doing? Like, you don't need this unit. But the belief that we had in the brand was obviously like, yeah, let's, I think we should take this. Yeah, um, just to the sheer growth. Just we we had we had a lot of plans to increase the product range. 
So at that point, we were very much t-shirts, tracksuits, shorts, probably like, we just wanted to expand the range to go for the, like to bring it more winter products, like the jackets and the uh, like jeans. jeans, like, and they are two, are, right now are about best sellers. Yeah. At, the time, at the time, jeans had really started to kick off for us, wouldn't they? And they were, yeah. they were selling really well, but we were kind of looking at thinking, yeah, jeans and t-shirt, you're going to wear them in summer, but what are you going to wear with jeans yeah. in autumn and winter? And we were like, obviously we had the hoodies, but we kind of thought sort of like, we Outer should try wear. jackets, do you know what I mean? Jackets, um, we obviously. just wanted to cover all bases, didn't we? And mm -hmm. that, this new facility, the new unit, let us let us do that. We're having the extra space to actually store the product. Yeah, it gave us the, gave us the capacity to go yeah. and have these products because we had somewhere to store and, them. Increasing more staff coming in and we were in, we quickly found that that unit wasn't big enough either. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had, we had enough. It was around about that time that we got, um, we'd obviously got players like Coutinho, Firmino, um, and, and then that really sort of sparked the brand on again because you saw these people, these these high profile footballers wearing that brand and, and our target audience probably is that sports where that's our background and and these people wearing that really kind of kicked the brand on again. And, Internationally and just, especially, yeah. you've seen like the international sales started coming in from the likes of Germany and France and Spain and in the Netherlands, Ireland and then that yeah. was just like kind of just the start of Filling up, filling up the warehouse to then kick on again. To the I guess our level. competitive edge didn't just want to be a UK yeah. brand, did we? We didn't yeah. want to just sit on like, oh, we could just be a UK brand. We kind of thought, well, there's a potential out there, like with these footballers wearing it in different countries, Coutinho playing in Spain. Do you know what I mean? We thought to ourselves, we could maybe kick us on, and 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 when we started opening it up to to Germany, like with Germany and and uh, obviously Ireland and America as well, we noticed these sales and um, with the, with the warehouse that we had. We had we had enough sort of storage yeah. to to have enough product yeah, to start these areas. That, yeah. uh, Black Friday two thousand and seventeen was both amazing and a bit of a disaster. Yeah, uh, the the the, ha the warehouse that we'd moved into, which we thought was going to be far too big for us for forever, um, quickly became too small. I think we'd we done the uh, most amazing uh, sales we'd we'd ever seen we'd ever done, in Black yeah. Friday. Yeah, you know sure. I mean? uh, I it wasn't it wasn't just Black Friday, it was the build up to Black Friday yeah. as well. Like the month before that the sales just start coming, coming in, in, in more and more and more and more and then the it just hit a boom with Black Friday and we felt we found ourselves like a week behind in orders. We weren't providing the service that we'd previously We didn't we didn't really calculate how much it would yeah. affect us, did we? We were like, Oh we've got staff to cover it but yeah. we didn't and then we were like we've got room at that point I think we'd had that warehouse we had another overspill warehouse and we had a warehouse at the, at the airport, airport yeah. and we just couldn't provide the customer service yeah. that we wanted. I think like you said, I think, we were, I think the, the freight companies had had a bit of a problem that year yeah, as well. So yeah. we had a de delay in house and they also had a delay and it was just like one big bang, almost like a bit of a car crash that we, we just said we're never, this is never going to happen again. We can't afford for this to happen yeah, again. Yeah, we can't so afford for it to happen in a long time. So that's like two, that was that two years ago? Yeah, two years, two years ago. ago. So we kind of made the decision we don't want this to happen again, so we're really going to have to go and get another warehouse. Uh, uh, but this time, make with, sure that with a growth plan. Obviously, yeah. we we're going to be in this this hub for for five years at we least. Sure. So it's the global hub. It's the, the, the I mean, global hub. The international growth and everything. This is all, where it's our, all, gonna all our items that are sent globally are are sent from this this hub here on a daily basis um, using the main carriers fully tracked around the world. Yeah, I think so. we we've tripled our staff. Um, mm. The warehouse is 60 odd thousand square foot. We've got office space for our marketing team, our garment technologist, um, uh, customer service, everything. The warehouse is on is, is on the side of the offices as well. So everything's focused to, to really take us on the next level and, and, and sort of really go for some sort of global growth. One of the highlights for me, for the brand, um, it has to be Leo Messi, where I'm actually been seen wearing, wearing the product. Um, I think it was Christmas Christmas Eve last year and I was sent like a someone had tagged me on a picture on Instagram. Um Barcelona had been on a kind of winter break and he was flying back to Argentina and he was pictured at the airport wearing wearing a black signature t shirt. Um that it was just probably like to come see up. how far uh, to see how far the the brand had come from like us being in the flat to then kinda of going through the years to actually seeing like the the arguably the greatest player that's ever lived wearing the product, just like, and I think it actually gives you credibility as well yeah. to actually other people see these type of guys wearing 
they don't get paid to wear it, they just wear it because they, they actually like to, either the quality, the fit, and the brand perception is just like there, so that they're like, I'm gonna for wear it, that. For anyone, for somebody like that wearing your product is great for two ex-professional footballers, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Who obviously look up to these type of boys to be wearing your products, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait for sort of the next part of the journey, hopefully just really kick on internationally yeah. and really That's take it plan. to the next level. That's the plan.